Purple Ties Podcast. Great stories of Treveca Trojans and life on the hill. Hello, friends. Michael Johnson with you here on Purple Ties Podcast, episode 18. And I'm really excited about uh, this time uh, together here. Uh, Whenever you happen to be watching this, it's late in the afternoon for me here in uh, Nashville at uh, the campus of uh, my favorite university, Trevecca Nazarene University. And it's even later in the afternoon because it's across that Eastern time zone for our guests this afternoon. Uh, We're here with uh, Reverend Kyle and Julie Poole. Uh, And uh, hey, it is great to see you, friends. I'm so glad you could be here on the show with us. Always good to see you, Michael. We're thrilled to be here. Absolutely. We always love talking to you, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where do you currently reside? We're in Locust Grove, Georgia, which is about 30 minutes south of Atlanta. Most people know it, that it's near the Tanger Outlet Mall. So uh, <laughs> we're right off I-75. <laughs> I've seen it. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's one that I've successfully, successfully been able to avoid uh, most <laughs> often. Uh, But that doesn't mean I don't know where some of the others are along the interstates in the southeast. Hey, uh, thanks again for being with us here this evening. As we were chatting a little bit earlier, um, you two haven't necessarily known each other all your lives. But um, um, and and we'll get to uh, how you ended up in Georgia uh, here all these years later. Um, But uh, prior to coming to Trevecca um, during your days as a college student, um, uh, is, is it true that there's a chance that you may have crossed paths when you were much younger? You know, the the Nazarene world is in some ways a very small, connected world, and and uh, our families go deep in the Nazarene church, and we're pretty sure that when we were little kids, we were in the same church, in the same Sunday school class in Donaldson, Tennessee, but had no idea. And that's probably a good thing because she would not have liked me as a, as a five-year-old. Just, just once or twice. We didn't both attend the same church, but my grandmother attended the same church that um, his family attended. So when we visited, Mama made us go to Sunday school. So <laughs> Everybody ought to go to Sunday school. So, yeah. Hey, <laughs> So years later, you yeah. both ended up choosing to attend Trevecca. Kyle, you were pretty local, and Julie, your family was down in South Carolina. Is that right? Just briefly tell me what it was that drew you to Trevecca to begin with. Yeah, for me, it's uh, three generations deep uh, at that time. Now with my kids, it's four, which is crazy. But uh Always had a deep love for Trevecca, but being a Nashville kid, I I sometimes thought that I might need to get out of town and and go to other places. And some of my friends did, and I explored those options, but uh, really became clear my senior year of high school that that that's where I wanted to be uh, and um, had the opportunity to to play baseball there, which I really wanted to do and had to work hard to do it, but uh, it all worked out. So I was glad I got to go to my the place I loved and do the thing I loved at the same time. I would say um, for me, uh, landing at Trevecca was 100% uh, an intervention from God. Mm. I had moved to South Carolina right before my senior year of high school and all of my close friends um, from before South Carolina, all were going to Olivet, and I really wanted to go be with my friends and um, had every intention. And the harder my parents pushed me to go to Trevecca, the harder I pushed back. And um, then uh, it was a um, the second annual TNT um, that I was at. And um, every time we would get off the bus, on campus, because we were staying off campus, every time we would get off the bus on campus, I would have this uh, little tap on my shoulder and the Lord say, you need to go to school here. And I would say, oh no, I don't. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to be with my friends. And um, the entire weekend, um, every time I got off the bus, the Lord said, you're supposed to go to school here. And um, I literally went home 
from that weekend and called the young man I was dating who was already at all of it and told him that God told me to go to Treveca and therefore there wasn't really any reason in pursuing that relationship any further. He mm -hmm. thought I was lying. Um, I wasn't. <laughs> um, but anyway, I felt like that's what the Lord wanted me to do and can't say that I have ever regretted it. You got to say that's a, a pretty powerful breakup line, though. I mean, <laughs> God told me to I'm argue with God. Uh, probably equally so why he thought I was lying, but. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, I'm so glad you both ended up at Trebekah. When did, when did you first notice each other? I mean, how did how did you guys start hanging out? Well, I uh, I lived in a suite in Benson with uh, Julie's brother was in that suite and several other friends. And uh, why don't you tell the story about uh, the phone call? Well, quite a few of uh, Kyle's suite mates were having fun at his expense and telling pretty much every freshman girl they could they could talk to that. Kyle Poole was looking for them, that he really liked them and he was looking for them. Yeah. And um, I didn't really know what to make of that other than I just thought it was weird. And so I think it was Scott Winchell who said that to me. And um, so later that evening, I was talking to my brother, who was one of Kyle's sweet mates, and um, didn't know I was on speakerphone. To which he says uh, something about... Uh, you know, Kyle was interested in all these girls. And I was like, what is the deal with that? Isn't, isn't he going out with somebody else? I guess just because he's ugly, he's having to go out with these other people. <laughs> and my brother got really quiet. And I was like, what's wrong? And he said, you're on speakerphone and Kyle's in the room. <laughs> Nothing like that kind of introduction, man. Uh, just laying it out there. First time, ugly freshman is the word. Ugly freshman. Isn't he that ugly freshman? <laughs> and then really about three days later, mm -hmm. he was standing in line in front of me in the calf. And I was keeping my back to him to avoid having a confrontation <laughs> about the fact that I had just said he was an ugly freshman. And uh, a friend of mine said my name and he flipped around and he said, do you really think I'm ugly? <laughs> Fantastic. I heard that name, Julie, Julie Bearden. Yeah, she's the one who called me ugly. <laughs> Just confronted her, man. Well, no pun intended. It, it ended up being a pretty beautiful story in the final analysis. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, you, you, uh, you've been married for how many years now? 30 years. We, in fact, it was December was 30, but we didn't get to travel. And this week we are going to try to get away to somewhere warmer where it's, you know, really cold here today, actually, um, in the twenties and, and thirties. And, uh, we're going to try to get down to Southern Florida in the next right. few days and spend about three days together and celebrate 30 years, man. And, uh, we, we have a couple of other aspects of the story, you know, as it, as it relates to Trevecca, but, both of you come from families who have connections to Trebekah before, and now your sons have continued that into, uh, I guess, probably a fourth generation. Am I right? Right, right. So Jackson graduated, what, in 2019? Am I? Or yeah, yeah that's right. Good memory. And then Curtis is uh, a junior this year? That's, that's right. You got it, man. Awesome, awesome. Well, they're, they're terrific young men, and I know you have a lot to be proud of. The, the Poole and Bearden families have been um, have been good to Trevecca, uh, and uh, we uh, we are so grateful for that. Kyle, uh, you you had a you had an interesting journey um, in, um, in in your college years, and I want to get to that in just a moment. But Julie, you were really involved too as a student. What were some of the things that you remember best about being here at Trevecca? Um, I would say probably, uh, other than my long-term relationship, <laughs> um, probably the most significant thing was being a part of Sigma. Um, say four year experience for me there with Sigma is a lot of great friendships. It's been really, um, really fun just this last couple of years with some of the, the ladies that are here in Georgia that I've gotten to reconnect with that were were there in Sigma the same time as I was. Um, 
great opportunity that I feel like I had there to learn a lot about service and um, a lot about good, clean fun and <laughs> laughing, <laughs> um, laughing with friends. Um, but that was definitely a, a pretty significant part of my journey at Trevecca. Um, I was also a cheerleader for a year. And so I um, met some great friends that way. Um, with Missy White and Lori Glenn um, and and Vicki Osborne, who um, are all friends that I, I still keep in contact with a little bit here and there. But um, that was that was a lot of fun and uh, part of the teacher ed program, too. So connections there that um, that made uh, I don't know, I didn't teach a long time, but uh, I think that part of what I've done for the majority of my career has involved a lot of adult education. And so that definitely played into it, even though it hasn't been in uh, necessarily school settings. And what's your current position now uh, vocationally? I am a supervisor of about, um, as a team, there's five of us that supervise about seven or 800 online chat coaches for WW International. So it's uh, busy and it's 24 seven and um, it's fun to get to watch people grow in their in their roles and and use different skills that I've learned along the way to help them. So. That's fantastic. Kyle, um, you ended up studying um, here at Trevecca and playing baseball, as you mentioned. You also got involved in uh, student government. Yeah, yeah, kind of a weird blend, you know, to be a part of the baseball program and you don't have a lot of time for other things but as as uh, my four years went on and there were some changes in the baseball program between my junior and senior year Elliot Johnson uh, moved on and uh, there were a lot of player changes and Julie and I had a serious relationship and I had a call to ministry so a lot of things were changing for me and um, at that time I got involved in student government there toward the end my, especially my junior and senior year and served as uh, the student body president uh, one year and that was a great experience because not only did I meet a lot of people there in Nashville and on campus but other Nazarene universities all over the country and uh, some of those people have been my friends for life so it's a pretty cool experience. It's great you mentioned uh, maybe a highlight from being a part of the that student government experience uh, what what's the what's the one thing during your baseball years here what what what's one or two just top shelf oh, memories man. that you could share quickly. Man, the uh, the district tournament in 1989, 90, uh, that 89 team, we won the district championship. I don't know if you remember this, Michael, but it was my, that would have been my sophomore year, I guess. It was the 89 spring. Um, and uh, we, um, we had a big changeover of players that year, but, uh, you know, Brad Stewart, Bob Engel, several people came from junior colleges and uh, we went on a run, man. And uh, we had ended up with a 40 win season. First time ever that Trebekah baseball had 40 wins. We were ranked number eight in the country, I think, yeah. at one point in AI. But uh, the district tournament at Cumberland, uh, we lost in the first game to Milligan and then uh, had Can to I just stop. Can I just stop you there for just a minute? Yeah, I drove, I drove out there to Lebanon that day and I got there. I thought to see the last two or three innings. And if I remember correctly, I heard now we got run ruled. The game's already over. And and I said, you're kidding me. And I knew that when you lose the first game in that in that oh. district tournament, there's virtually no way you're going to come back to win it. But it anyway, uh, I was it. there on the Saturday. Oh, uh, man, that was a long day. Um, we lost to Milligan uh, in the first uh, first game of that tournament. Came out of the losers bracket, started to win, beat Belmont, beat Lipscomb. Uh, on the last day, that Saturday, we had to beat. Uh, let me see. I think we beat uh, um, Cumberland in an extra inning game uh, for, on Saturday. Had to come at triple play. Was in that game. First time I've ever been a part of triple play. Uh, Dwayne Bolden, our shortstop, uh, caught a line drive, stepped on second, threw to first, and and got out of that inning. Then uh, after that win against Cumberland, we had to beat Union twice. And uh, and so we, we beat them uh, that first time, which is the second game of the day. Uh, Trevecca didn't want us to play on Sunday at the time. And uh, and so uh, they they said, well, we got to get special permission to either play on Monday or you guys can play the third game on Saturday. 
and we decided let's play three and our pitchers were exhausted and we didn't know who but we ended up beating them uh in game three and so I went to the area tournament and had a chance to play to get in the NAI World Series. But that's another story. We went to Arkansas and sat for three days in the rain. Uh, and, and, and they never could play the tournament. Drove all the way to North Florida to try to play the tournament uh, at the, ho- the home field of the University of North Florida, I think. And they beat us. Uh, they're ranked number three in the country. Beat us three to nothing. Uh, then we had tried to play West Florida. And this torrential rain was still going on. Started the game three times. It was tied one to one in the sixth and then they opened up in like the seventh and beat us and and that was the end of the season but it was an incredible run i'll never forget it so exciting yeah you know uh i don't i mean i've worked here at trebeca for so long now it's hard to pick out any singular memories in in some (laughs) respects but one thing that i have learned is that there are no memories like college memories right you know those years are just are just so special. You went on there to from Trebeca to Nazarene Theological Seminary, and um, and then then you began uh, a, a ministerial career. Walk us real quickly through all of the different places you've served, and and now um, where you're currently serving. Uh, just kind of give us a little bit of a chronology there. I think it might be interesting. <laughs> Never dreamed I'd be a pastor. Grew up in the church, but that was not on my radar. It was at Trevecca where God radically uh, transformed my life my sophomore year and called me to ministry. I was scared to death. Uh, had a, was a business major, actually, at Trevecca. And Corliss McGee was my advisor. And I said, uh, Corliss, what do I do? Uh, I, you know, I'm called to ministry and I've got these business classes. And she said, Kyle, I think it'd be good to keep a business major, but you need more religious studies. And so Don Dunnington, who was the chaplain still at the time, uh, kind of showed me how I could get a religious studies minor and meet the prerequisites for seminary, still get the business major. So did all that. Julie and I's relationship uh, accelerated. We got married our Christmas break of our senior year, uh, moved out to Kansas City to go to seminary, uh, worked for NYI Ministries uh, while I was in seminary for several years with uh, Gary Sivright, Fred Fullerton, NYC's, um, learned so much, worked at Kansas City First with Jess Middendorf and was in youth ministry there. Um, in 1997, um, answered that call to be a pastor and, and left uh, what I love doing, but really felt the call to be a senior pastor. So we went to a little country town in East Texas, uh, one stoplight. Grand, grand there were two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Grand Saline, Texas, uh, on the Dallas district, and uh, those people were so good to us. Uh, we loved them. They loved us, and um, we stayed for three years until we got a call to Gardendale, Alabama, and uh, we uh, answered a call to Gardendale and stayed there about seven years, and uh, great church, great people just north of Birmingham, uh, had a large school and daycare, still still do, um, learned so much. I don't know why they took a chance on a 30-year-old at the time. We went through a building program and uh, just had great days there. Mm-hmm. And then got a call kind of to come closer back to home, uh, just north of Nashville to Gallatin, Tennessee. And uh, honestly, when we went to Gallatin, we thought we'll probably be here forever because it's, it's home and it's Nashville. Um, After a flood in Nashville, um, we were remodeling, kind of had our heads down doing ministry, and um, Dr. Eddie Eastep reached out about a call to Midland Valley in South Carolina, and we thought, man, we don't know. We haven't been here in Gallatin long enough, but we couldn't get away from that call, and that call to Midland Valley uh, ended up just being just a match made in our minds in heaven. we love those people and, and love that church. Some of our best friends in the world are at Midland Valley, South Carolina, and uh, we're there for almost eight years until we were elected to, to this role as a district superintendent in Georgia. So uh, it's cr- a crazy ride, but we're just still saying, here we are, God, you know. Julie, uh, your husband is a district superintendent. <laughs> dad, your dad was a district superintendent did you ever in your wildest dreams you know think that you're going to end up in that in that role someday oh no no because i said i would never marry a preacher (laughs) but these are the things god does to you when you fall in love with an accounting major and, and god pranks you um 
it, you know, it, I, I find it entertaining at times uh, how many of the same, I guess, turns in the road that happened to my mother have happened to me. She also said she'd never marry a preacher. And, and she did. And she also said she would never, ever want to be a superintendent's wife. And she was. Mm-hmm. And I said those same things. <laughs> and so be careful. here, yes. Yeah, so I, maybe I should quit saying I won't, <laughs> but um, right. it's it, one of the things I think has always helped. I remember my mom telling me that um, when she was trying to decide whether she would marry my dad, since she didn't want to be a minister's wife, that she asked my aunt Justine what she thought about it. And my aunt Justine said, it's a lot better if you love the pastor. <laughs> so if you love the pastor, you'll be okay. <laughs> awesome. I Thank think it's really that. great that both of you have mentioned names of people that were special to you during your college years. And as we draw to a close here uh, with this uh, with this episode, Kyle, I wonder if you could take just a moment to pay tribute to um, one of your teammates who um, as we've announced here in, in recent days, uh, lost his life in a tragic auto accident. What are, what are a couple of memories that you have about Brad Stewart? We came out of a baseball season in my freshman year, 87, 88, where we had a lot of talent that did not achieve. And um, there was a big turnover, and we wondered what would happen. And my sophomore year, these guys from Illinois came in, Brad Stewart, Bob Engel, and then we had great people like Clay Boone who stayed on the team and, and um, that team just gelled. And one of the reasons that team gelled was, be- was because Brad was a leader. Brad was the kind of guy that, that really pursued excellence and everybody else around him saw that and he caused us all to rise to a higher standard of excellence. He believed in not only knowing the fundamentals, but, but executing them. He did the little things right he was a competitor, <laughs> hated to lose, whether it was baseball or basketball or ping pong or, or a debate. Um, but uh, just really, and, and his foundation was in the Lord. He wasn't a Nazarene guy. That didn't matter. Most of our players weren't Nazarene, uh, you know, but uh, there were a couple of us on the team. But we all just were the part of a family, not only a baseball family, but a family of friends. And um When we got the news that that Brad had been killed in this tragic accident, some of us who hadn't connected in a long time immediately began to reconnect. Um, Clay Boone and Keith Hatton and Lawrence Hall, who's been a councilman in the past there in Nashville, and and just uh, all kinds of folks, some of our players from Canada, you know, like Dave Crozier and Dan Moon and it's just amazing how this family of friends comes together and we have each other's back during this. And uh, so uh, it makes you really want to make the most uh, of the time and not miss the opportunities that God gives you. So, you know, when we get back to Nashville soon, uh, Clay and I, Clay Boone and I have already decided we're not going to miss an opportunity to get together for dinner. (laughs) Uh, We cherish these friendships and uh, we know Brad is with the Lord and we're praying for his wife, Lynette, who's also a Trebekah uh, alum, and their three daughters who are uh, young adult daughters. Uh, um, the guys on the team are just saying, what can we do to help? And we're praying for them, but we stand ready to, to help. I think uh, that's such an appropriate way to, to bring it to a close. Um, we never know what a day is going to bring forth. Never know what a year is going to bring forth, you know, a pandemic or, 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 or what um, may come. But one thing we can know is that the ties that bind due to being involved in a place like this do give us some opportunities to really stay connected in ways that are hard to describe. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, our love and appreciation for you all as distinguished alumni. Julie, you're on our alumni board and you've been a big help to us there over these last few years. Um, Trevecca is a place worth continuing to support and to invest in and we thank you for the incredible contributions you both have made to life here on the hill thanks for joining us here this evening really enjoy it michael love you love tnu mm-hmm. love thanks you, for being with us folks you've been uh, listening to purple ties podcast uh, thanks to engineer david klimkowski sports information director greg ruff and 
others who helped make this podcast possible. Uh, till next time. Purple Ties Podcast. Great stories of Treveca Trojans and life on the hill.